Welcome to the VarsityKansas.com Big Show. I am Joanna Chavik of the Wichita Eagle and VarsityKansas.com. And my guest today is collegiate boys basketball coach Mitch Fiegel. Thanks for being here. You're welcome. Glad to be here. All right. Well, let's talk a little bit about your season so far. You guys are sitting at 11-2, and two, and you played a championship of a tournament a week ago. How do you feel about where your team is right now? Kind of give us an, an overview. Well, I feel really good about our team in a lot of ways. Um, the Gardner game was just so very good for us because it exposed some things. You know, you roll along and, and, and you're winning basketball games and it's easy to sweep things under the rug. Uh, when you take a loss, you examine, you know, everything about your team a lot more closely, particularly at the mid-season point because that's when it's time to reevaluate, um, really think through what you're doing, Decide what you want to tweak, how you're going to fine-tune things, and, you know, the absolute direction that you're going to go in for the rest of the season. Coming away from that game, and you also lost to Andale, which was a really close game, where do you feel like you guys need to go now as we hit February, which to me is where the real grind is, is because the postseason is still a month away. It's a grind at this point. You know, you're, you're deeply involved in the process in February, and in February, that's when teams either set it aside, say, you know what, I'm not going to quite get this done for whatever reason, or you stay focused, determined, and on task. And when you stay focused, determined, and on task, if you have the talent in the building, well, that's when you go to the next level. February February's tough, though. It really is. And, you know, in, in both of our losses, you know, to Andale, to Gardner, we were able to highlight one factor that was present in both of those games, which we have to fix, and that is we did not share the basketball enough. Mm-hmm. Our, two, our two lowest assist totals of the season came in those two games. So what that taught us and what we are working very hard on is sharing the basketball. You now sit with a team where, you know, you talk about um, sharing and they share a lot of time. You've got a lot of depth in this team. You guys do a five-in, five-out. Tell me about the depth that you have and some of these top players and, and just how they are able to fill different roles for you. Well, you know, to truly be successful with a five-in, five-out, your best players have to sacrifice. They, they know that. We have a lot of conversations about that. And when they buy in, when your best players buy in, that's when it really works. If they don't buy in, it never, it'll never, it never quite click for you. And we're very fortunate that we've had some guys very willing to sacrifice minutes uh, in order to, to do what we think allows us to be the best team we can be. Looking at some of your top players, Cameron Christian is one of your top scorers. Uh, You've got a litany of guys, though. Talk a little bit about what they're able to do out there. Cam's having a great year for us offensively. I mean, he, he's, he's putting in the time. He's confident. Um, he can score in a variety of ways. Um, Austin Waddell is another guy that I just love offensively. You know, and, and what I love about Austin is Austin can dominate a game and take three shots. He can, you know, you'll look at the stat chart at the end of the game and he'll have seven assists and, and eight rebounds and two steals. And he, he, he's our most complete guy. Uh, Xavier Adams, uh, we're, we're working real hard in X's too to become that complete point guard, that, that guy who really values every possession. But we have a, a number of other guys who can really shoot the basketball. And uh, once we get to the point where we share it freely, and those guys know they're going to get the ball, our shooting percentage is going to be even better than it is right now. So, you know, you're you're exactly right. February, um, that's where you're working really hard to to get everybody body in and on the same page. When you look at your team, I I always, whenever I cover you, I always make sure to point out that, you know, yes, Kentucky is doing the five in, five out. But Coach Fiegel has done this for years and years. How did you move to the point where you decided to do it this way, and why does it work for you? I don't think you can do this um, if you have a bunch of guys on your team with personal agendas. And so we've worked very hard to, to create an atmosphere where people feel good about the five in, five out. Now, the other thing that we've done on certain years, and this is one of those years, 
Uh, we're going to five in and five out on most games for two and a half quarters. And then for a quarter and a half, we're going to bring it with the guys that we think we need to have on the floor that night to be successful. So in that sense, you know, you're rewarding everyone. Um, your eighth, ninth, and tenth guy, he's playing major minutes in meaningful parts of the game, and your best players are finishing it out for you. So I think that's a win-win for everybody. And to get them to buy into that, because, you, I mean, it's, it's a lot of time on the bench that they're spending, but, of course, they don't spend too much extended periods of time. I mean, it's just kind of you do basically every couple minutes. Yeah, it, it's, it's, a, it's about every two minutes. Um, can be a little bit longer, can be a little bit shorter, mostly based on, on the flow of the game. But what we found out is that if you'll go 100% for two minutes, you'll be just produ as productive in a half of a game as you will be playing a whole game and just kind of hitting and missing with the energy factor. You know, we've, we've traced back, we've gone back and looked at different players from different years, and our guys who play this style take about the same number of shots as our best players who were playing the whole games back in the day. That's really interesting. Well, and I find it fascinating, too, that you keep all those records and, and go back through them. I suppose it's a great way to learn. Um, tell me a little bit, though, as we head into the last part of the season, into the postseason, how much does your schedule benefit you when we do look at the postseason? You've played Gardner Edgerton, a 5A school. You're playing, you know, Andale, which is for, of course, their league. But how much does that benefit you when it comes to crunch time? Well, I mean, we, we, have, we, we played in a preseason tournament where we played Cheney, a 3A school, and then that's the last 3A school we're going to see, we even see until postseason play. Now, is that an advantage? I, I, I don't think classification in itself is an advantage, but the AVT, AVCTL is a, a very, very competitive league, Division Four, especially this year. So, yes, we get to postseason play. If there's anyone that's got more big game experience than us in 3A, I'd, I'd like to know who that is. All right, well, Coach, I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Good luck to you guys as you finish out the season. Thanks. Glad to be here, Joe.